Enzo. I'm just going to be leading this little conversation. Um, and so maybe you all want to start by introducing yourselves to the audience. Yes, we'll go around. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Magalie Colleen and Christopher. I'm the playwright and producer of this evening. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aisa Kendrick, and I'm the director for this magnificent work. Bonsoir tout le monde, my name is Oja Vincent. I'm the sound designer for tonight. Okay, I'm going to start off with this. My beautiful cousin Magali is in the audience. He's related to us. Vincent, Stefan, Alexis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh. So we discovered that we're related when we were talking about, and we were just talking about, what's your family name? Because that's what we do in Haiti. What's your family name? Bip, 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 bip. Buh, 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 buh. We're related, so that that's we discovered that. Doesn't he look like my cousin Jacques Antoine? Crazy. Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, put that out there. so I I have a couple of questions for you all, and I want to start with um, all of you with this. Um, so, in approaching the piece, how did the the conflict of the Haitian versus American values like? correlate with your own lived experience and what was that like to like negotiate that within the context of the play in terms of writing it from your brain and directing it and also definitely coming into the sound design aspects of it. I don't understand what do you mean by the conflicts between Haitian so and American? The grace is like has this like back and forth moment between like I if I fight for someone am I fighting for Haiti am mm. I fighting for America I was mm. born in America but mm. I grew up in Haiti so what was that like to negotiate that yeah so as, as a writer yeah um, the thing about being of a heritage that's not five generations American is that there's a relationship with the homeland, the motherland, right? And depending on which nation you're from, the way that American politics impacts the motherland creates this dynamic of conflection, right? You're conflicted. I love where I live, I love my lifestyle, I love my identity, but if I love this identity, is it a conflict with that other identity, right? And in terms of writing it, it wasn't so much a story about the conflict between my mo my parents' motherland and this land, but it was a conflict of not belonging where you call home, right? Mm -hmm. And when you are someone of the African diaspora, the moment you walk in the space, there is an I they they try to identify you mm -hmm. as something that is not specific to you, but that is general, that fits their you know, definition of human being. And so when you also have a heritage, a background of a clear awareness of your heritage, and you're proud of that, and yet you're being told you shouldn't be proud of being a human being because you're of the African diaspora, it becomes a conflict of, I love this country, but I don't love how they treat me. So I don't think it's it's simply a Haitian American conversation. It's anyone that um, is being told that you're less than in the land that you call home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that exploration of how do you survive in the world is one of the themes that I'm delving into. How do we thrive, not just survive? Mm -hmm. How do we not? Um, fall victim to that messaging, because we're all hearing messages left and right, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're not this size, you're, there's something wrong with you. If you're not this, you know, we're all con being impacted, but how do you thrive? And so how, does, how do you thrive is by my answer that I hope that the audience gets is know thyself mm -hmm. and truly love thyself. Mm -hmm. And if thyself, if you identify yourself by your heritage, then really love that. Mm -hmm. um, and as a Haitian American, uh, I love my heritage. I'm enamored 
<laughs> yeah. my heritage. Um, and I want to inspire everyone to love their heritage. Mm -hmm. You can love this nation, but still love what makes you unique. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers your question um, from the player's viewpoint. <laughs> well, I, th I think you, you, you touched on a key thing, and I think that's, that's something that we were just talking about backstage, uh, and we were doing that often, is this is, um, I mean, Goosey, I'm going to shout you out, you, you had just mentioned again the hero's journey, mm -hmm. and, and the journey of the, the human part, as in how, how it connects the, us culturally. And so you were talking about the Haitian American, I'm coming from Afro, Puerto Rican, American. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's and complex. It's <laughs> complex. And even if I said I'm Afro Puerto Rican or Puerto Rican to somebody who's Hispanic, m my mother is my color. And so there's an assumption of even that of like, mm -hmm. oh, you can't be Puerto Rican because. Mm -hmm. How? Yeah. It was, <laughs> And it's like, yeah, but that's why it's called the rich port. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the Africans were brought over <laughs> to, to work. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so, so, you know, that dynamic and the question of how, how one has courage. And, the, and it takes, and the thing is you won't know that that's what you want or need until you feel the schism. I think the schism is the gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so because that, that's, a, that's a breaking open for an opportunity for something different. And so, but I felt that early going, huh, why do people treat this? And just out observing that, as well as, oh, well, you know, well, my mother, she's fluent in Spanish. And like, what's the difference? Oh, but you're not really black. Well, you don't talk black. You know, and I got that from people, you know, the kids who look just like me. And I'm just like, well, wait a minute. What, you, what is talking black? Well, what is being black? What is that? I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. But, oh, but then, but anybody who's not black is like, oh, you're definitely black. <laughs> 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 so, and so, okay, what's that? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? What does any of that mean? You know, mm -hmm. and then, and so... That dynamic, you know, those questions of, but how do you define your culture? What are the things that you're going, what is going to gravitate? What is the things that hold you? What are the things that define you? What are the things that are going to nourish you versus create um, chosen schisms? So you have to choose, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that, again, the whole mm -hmm. thing of mama ni ni, you know, you, you're biting yourself mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's social things that will bite at you to either control you, to minimize you, to la la la, to, to have you buy more things, to change you, you know, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you have to trust that your own, once you question, you know, I, I love that quote that people talked about, and I Albert Einstein said the same thing, you know, when you question, the questions, questions, question is, 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 the, is the whispering from God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people say, oh, why you ask so many questions? <laughs> You're seeking truth mm -hmm. in something. So you, you, something in your God self is seeking an answer. Mm -hmm. and, so, mm -hmm. and so trust that. And trust, you know, challenging, questioning, questioning, and, and biting back, but biting things that no, no longer are nourishing to you. So, for me, cult my, my Puerto Rican culture, my African Puerto Rican culture, my Taino Puerto Rican culture, my Alabama fa father uh, African American culture, and the African culture, and the Afri African diaspor diaspora mm. culture, mm. because, you know, but there's also Brazilian, mm -hmm. there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff mixed up in, in our family life. Mm -hmm. So Cuban, you know, it's, it's everywhere. We're, we're, we're a blend. Mm -hmm. we, and, and so navigating that with, is more about, I, I find that uh, Grace's answer when he says, who, what are you? And she says, human? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, I think sometimes it's interesting to just start from that place. It's an honest place. It's an <laughs> honest place. And then all of the, all of like the, the album, all of what they bring to this tape, to the space, good, bad, and different in your family line, in your DNA, you get to read, understand, absorb, walk in, dress in, take in, all that stuff, shine, and know that you're not just one thing. Oh, what's your sign? <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a this. Yeah, but there's also, uh, you're 12, there's 12 mm -hmm. signs mm -hmm. in each chart. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you're just one thing. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, how, how does the human mind, the human ego, elevate itself? So it's, it's it, you go beyond what people tell you. Yeah. Go beyond. Trust, trust that y you, you're here for, you know, the larger journey. Yeah. I see. Um, yeah, sound wise, and it's just really about tension. You know, I've worked with Ike's a lot, with a lot of different artists for different sound installations and plays and things. But in meeting with Magali and Ike, it was about conveying this uh, almost suffocating environment of negotiation of identity, right? So wow, it's a wild ride being a Haitian American first generation. I can say directly that my specific life experience is always to let people know I'm Haitian because they assume I'm Puerto Rican or Dominican, worth it. So. But, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, to open the dialogue, it's important to let people know um, because the Haitian Revolution really renegotiated identity in general. Right, so when things are brought up in the play, such as, you know, from the from the US side, from Lot Boa, you know, mm -hmm. we learn about Haiti, we learn about Toussaint. You know, so a lot of Haitian a lot of uh, Americans think uh, Toussaint Louverture is the father of Haiti, right? And we would never pit them against each other because of course Toussaint opened the door to Louverture. But Desalines is our father. And so for that to be even mentioned in this play is giving people a, a foundation. Right? It's like, you know, I was just saying the foundation of human first. I mean, this is what the revolution was really about. You know, the misnomer of uh, uh, Haiti being a slave revolution is an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. The minute you stop being enslaved in your mind to conduct a revolution, you can, you can be involved in a revolution, but you can't have a slave revolution. A slave doesn't conduct revolution, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah, you can't have a slave revolution because the slave does not conduct the revolution, right? Enslavement is a, is a, uh, a condition, right? And we're entering this consciousness now, and I think that this play is a, is a very important part of renegotiating identity, renegotiating his, his story, right? Mm -hmm. And finding our story. Mm -hmm. um, so the sound is really meant to convey a lot of times it's a haunting of the present reality. We're taking you into um, negotiated dimensional spaces. Um, but that tension of, you know, for myself coming from parents, I had a, a grandmother assassinated on my mother's side and a grandfather assassinated on my father's side. So these moments of Fort de Marche in the, in the uh, character's consciousness, this is my child consciousness as well thinking about my grandfather locked up somewhere, dreaming about going and rescuing my grandfather over and over again, you know, and all the wild stories from it being, oh, it was the Nazis who gave the Duraye power to, you know, what we know was the actual facts of the matter around the, the 1915 occupation and what have you. So all of these kind of convoluted uh, mythologies you heard in the play uh, as a 12 year old were making fun of the character. Mm -hmm. And we all grew up with this stuff, HBO and mm -hmm. you know, uh, the mythology of, of the origin of AIDS and all the different ways that they have tried to make Haiti till today uh, pay for mm -hmm. the, the heroic deeds mm -hmm. of, of our fathers, right? Mm -hmm. And mothers. 50% 50, 50 women fighting for us, as you know. So again, the mentioning of people like Cecile Fatima and different folks is, is key. And the tension kind of loans 
to the uh, presentation as a stage itself. Mm -hmm. It's a character in itself to keep one inside of the feeling uh, that we have uh, in negotiating our own identity. Thank y'all for that. Um, I have a question for the director. Um, in approaching this work, which gives like very much like Afro-Caribbean neo-futurism, I was reading it and I was like, where are we going? Time, space, continuum, yeah, okay. Um, how is it to approach this like work that exists somewhere, but in between, but not really, but yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, honestly, I was just like, wee! <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually I do a lot of kind of like multimedia anything. Mm -hmm. And usually I, I'm, I'm completely uh, thrilled by anything that deals with uh, multidimensional um, time folding ancestral, primordial, you know, um, cosmic dynamics, only because, you know, I think, you know, outside of, you know, just the, the spiritual, I think the spiritualness and the culturalness of my mother's side of the African Puerto Rican side, and you've got, you know, the Bola y Plena and the Luisa side, and all of that kind of stuff going on. Then there's my dad, who is an aerospace engineer, and I was just constantly f uh, amazed. Yeah, I know, from Huntsville, Alabama, go figure. <laughs> yeah. yes. Oh my God! It was like genius. And so, you know, I'm just like, wow, I was always cosmically fascinated about the world, the world of the outside. My mother was more about the world of the inside and the things that are intangible. Mm -hmm. And so both things are just, yeah, how do you, and you know, I'm always fascinated about this, again, this concert called This Human, or even the world, or even life, because I'm like, the hell is this? <laughs> you know, what's going on? What's going on? Like, what, <laughs> we, we, we're, we're awake, and then we sleep, and then what is that? And then, <laughs> well, why are we sleeping? Yeah. It's like, was that real? Yeah. Am I now sleeping? What's going on? Yeah. And, then, and then this whole thing of, you know, also the traditions, like from, you know, the, the Australian, the, the Aborigines and mm. dreamscape, you know, mm. dream space, the, the, how, do you, how do you navigate when, you, you know, these portals, mm. these portals mm -hmm. that are, there's, people can't explain what they are, mm. and yet they're real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so again, um, I, I delight in, well, how can we explore that? What, what is the beginning, middle, and ends of that little dynamic? And so, an opportunity, and this is just a reading. I mean, this is a reading. So, they're, they're, we, we brought a few toys, <laughs> gifted by old Jeff, you know, and this phenomenal, talented cast. So, they're portals too, with their own inner realm and their own uh, talented, and Cassandra and Jenna. So I mean, it, it's 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 just those portals, those entryways, and Magali's text, and just the vision she has. I think it's it's wonderful. I I think life is never like my conversation and my answer. Non, it's not linear. <laughs> it's kind of like tangential, and then it went like that, and then you find your way somewhere, and you're like, huh. <laughs> For sure, for sure. And yeah. for, for you, I would love to know what your experience was, like, in, in, in terms of, like, the sound and the... Oh, man, I was excited. I mean, I do this for, uh, I've done it for, like, Tongan artists and uh, just, you know, last a guy from St. Croix. Uh, but to, to bring it home, it's just like, oh, wait, I got some recordings from, you know, from Payan, from whatever. 2015 Rah Rah Festival. I can't wait to go back into the drive. And, uh, you know, at the same time, I was sort of limited because I, I just got done moving from the West Coast back to the East Coast. And so I don't have like access to my 3,000 LPs or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, he's and, not and, joking. And he's not year, joking, everybody. Everybody thinks yeah, he's, he's my joking. My lab is a little limited. But, but CDs? 
No, LPs. LPs. Yeah. Like records. Oh, records. Oh, yeah. 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 Vinyl. Yeah, vinyl. Vinyl records. Uh, <laughs> but it, you know, I mean, it, it was it was amazing to kind of go down the rabbit hole. Uh, each time I do this, it's really like a tailor, right? Mm. So to talk to somebody and then to try to immerse yourself as deeply as you can, almost like a method actor, right? It's like, I'm not doing anything but kind of paying attention to these textures and sounds and deep into the frequencies, you know, I kind of lived there already. So this was a beautiful thing um, to be able to share some of that with folks. And as it unfolds and, and develops, it's just going to get better. And uh, more kind of interactive to bring folks into the mental and emotional spaces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an honor, really. It's, uh, I feel like we are doing the, the continuation of the work because in a Haitian revolution, uh, which continues, right, mm -hmm. is uh, knowing, right, Haiti being the first point of impact for the invasion, right? Mm -hmm. 1492, knowing mm -hmm. that native people were resisting first and returning the name to native people in solidarity is the depth of solidarity we need right now with what's happening in Gaza. You know, we need right now with what's happening with the reinvasion of Haiti right now, right? We need to remember our ancestors in that way. So any any bell, any, any uh, bucket of cold water you can get thrown on you is, a, is an honor to be involved with. I'm adding some, some droplets to or whatever you want to call it. So it's, uh, I was absolutely enthused and, you know, met family. Incredible. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this was a very collaborative, you know, journey, you know, it's it, that this has to be collaborative. Um, Cause it's, it's, it's a story that's bigger than one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've known Aixa for a minute. And um, when she was talking with me about the script, I'm like, you're going to direct this. <laughs> <laughs> because you get it. Mm -hmm. You know, either you get it or you don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I really feel, like I said, blessed because this was a gift from the ancestors. Speaking of ancestors, thank you for that. Thank you. That was my next question okay. for you. Okay. Where were you when the ancestors touched you? And gave you this this the gift of this play. Mm. Where were you when it struck? I guess where where it had it to be. I, I I mean it's been a work in progress in my mind in very different ways. Um, I've been calling for it. Um, for a while, I tend to love exploring. Um, what the spirits are saying in my work. If you see any of my work, there's always a spirit being somewhere in there, or you know, some memory of another ancestor impacting the here and now. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is all that matters. I think we're the byproduct of all this DNA floating in us, and it's not just a cellular level, it's a spiritual level, mm -hmm. right? And so when do you open yourself up to those voices and I'm constantly looking to get clarity, mm. right? And um, conversation of what it means to be an immigrant doesn't stop after first generation, it doesn't stop after second generation, it doesn't stop after third generation. Um, and so when I keep on hearing all these immigrant stories, I'm like, we have so much in common what is that commonality? Mm -hmm. And it's the depth of heritage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That we need to tell stories about. So it's not just the here and now, it's mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm always asking. And it just really feels like we really need to listen to them mm. right now. Mm -hmm. There's so much pain <laughs> in the world and we're not fixing it. Mm -hmm. Serious. For sure. So um, we've got to stop using muscles and open up our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know. 
But we need to open it up to the audience because mm -hmm. we don't want to keep them. We could talk for hours. Yeah, we yeah. can yeah. talk. Okay. Um, hi, audience. Thank yeah. you for staying with us. Again, for the audience. Um, let's take questions if anyone has questions. Some of the cast is trying to run away, but I'm sure they'll answer questions <laughs> if you ask them. We see you. Um, <laughs> so if anyone has a question, just wait, because I can't see with the light. If not, I'll start. I'll ask more questions. OK. Is there a hand? No, there's one. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. So what's the future for this? This was a reading. I was a wonderful experience, very spiritual. It is a full end play. Yes. And so I'm raising funds. I'm applying for grants. And actually, at the very beginning, I encourage people to go to my website, Conchell Productions, uh, which you can find by, by taking the, the, the QR code that you got when you entered. And if you didn't get one, there's some over there on that chair. Uh, you can go to my website and then find access to my company, Conchell Productions. And the goal is for us, I'm applying for grants with my team to get funding to fully develop it, you know? Um, and it's a multimedia piece. So you, you heard the projections, sound, movement. It's gonna be magic. So you need money for magic. So that's the future, raising the funds and for continuing the development process, you know? Cause I'm, a, I'm applying for a development grant. I wanna develop the movement. So, you know, I wanna further develop the sound and put some of it, so it, you know, it'll stay in, in the reading stage until you get enough money to fully develop it, but it, my goal is to get it on stage by 2025, so Hi. I like sticking to goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she does. So. <laughs> and she does. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other, any other questions? Please don't be shy. It's yeah. Yeah. Just a comment. Thank you, my baby. Thank you, my Thank you. Thank you. That they live in. You know, we in our continents reign peace. And our youth are not at peace. No, they're not at peace. So that my sense is that this day needs to travel mm. to the people and the news to understand their own emotions. Mm. Why youth and purpose we lose in relation with mm. just because you're second generation. Do not lose who you are. Yeah. And when you lose it, you are no more. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be carried. It's such an important message for the generation of nations from here. Because the schism that we talk about, we like happening of perception, of who you are trying to please yourself mm -hmm. in a conflicting society. Mm -hmm. As a person, as a woman, as a Haitian living here. So many of us want to deny who we are mm -hmm. because of the pain of what we experience. And so I really hope that we can go forward <laughs> to leave this day, to bring it from the roads of the road come out so that they can have this experience and feel free enough to get in touch with the spirit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. very powerful. I especially liked the relationship slash conflict between the mother and the daughter. I thought that was relatable across uh, across the cultural divide. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, will there be another reading or is this the first reading and then you want to go from reading to play? And the reason I'm asking the question because I think that in this current, the, the way that you did it t tonight was very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see it again like this with maybe just a bit of simple, I mean, you know, PowerPoint-like kind of projections and a little bit more music. 
before it becomes the big thing because there's something about the way that you did it tonight mm -hmm. that forced me to focus on the themes. Mm -hmm. And I think the more you add, and I think whatever you're going to add is going to be fabulous, but the, the more you add, the more there is to, I don't want to use the word distract because that's the wrong word. But there, the more there is to engage mm. outside of some of the very powerful messages that you can see when it's stripped down. Mm. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what comes after? Is what comes between this and the big thing? Mm. Well, the the steps to the big thing is for the development, right? So it's more readings, but with more things thrown in to explore. Um, if you you know if you really look at a budget to do projections, it's not cheap, right? Mm -hmm. So you work on what you can afford to do, which is movement and sound and and, and further exploring the use of space. And, and and that's I love that comment. I will really because you know Laramie Project is a piece with mm -hmm. people reading from the script mm -hmm. with yeah. things thrown in mm -hmm. so that people can focus on the script. You know, vagina monologues. It's always readings. <laughs> <laughs> and just focusing on the message. So that, you know, endless possibilities, right? Literally, you could have movement in the space and stick to actors being reading the script and the movement happened from other spirit beings being overcome. Yeah, there's, there's no end to where you could go with it, right? And so uh, the, this is the very first public reading. Mm -hmm. And most projects go through multiple readings, and I've submitted it for di different, you know, festivals to be read. So, because in that process, that's where you start building the the the, 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 the stuff of it, right? So, who knows? It's already about to ching ching. <laughs> you know? But I, you know, you got if you keep on raising the money to build, you know, then the work gets out. Right, the story gets told in the process. It's not hidden in a corner. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to. Um, you're asking if we have questions. I'm going to throw a question back at them. Yeah. You, what I'm saying is, I wonder if you have any questions of us. What do you need to know from your audience um, as you move forward with your with your piece? Uh, what themes popped out at you? Mm -hmm. um, was there anything unclear to you? Did you feel um, connected to the human story or did you feel, I don't know this culture and therefore the human story was challenging? That's a lot. That's a lot of questions. They're telling me. Go, 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 go. So um, what popped out at me in particular um, was the relationship between the uh, between Grace and her parents, and the disconnect in the mm -hmm. relationship between Grace and her parents, mm -hmm. um, and also the idea that we are all on a journey trying to find who we are so that we can be our fully realized selves. Those were the themes that were most um, important for me. I'll just tell a quick story. I was at an event where. Um, self-help type of thing, a lot of people, and the moderator said, everyone here who's like 17 to 21, stand up. Uh -oh. And so all these young kids stood up, uh -oh. and everyone, and, and she said, look, these are your parents. And so a lot of us are a product of the mistakes that a 20-year-old made because they were a very young parent. Um, and so I think we're all, as you mentioned, um, dealing with some, of, some form of dysfunction because all of our parents were still young. If you're old enough to be, have children, you're still a young person yourselves. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to, um, to see that theme amplified. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am not a Haitian American, or not, I'm not Haitian, but um, I got a lot of Haitian friends. And <laughs> so I felt a certain connection, but um, I also felt um, not that I was inside baseball, but I did feel like it was a little bit not for me in some places. And I hmm. think that came out of um, a lot of storytelling um, when I might have benefited from more action. 
mm. more show don't tell. Let, let, let's see that relationship. Mm. 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 So that Thank, you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. consideration right because the, the there's a segment when she opens up uh, uh, an album right and that's the images of the nation and so the, implying that uh, all the stories of the nation that's your story even if you don't recognize it uh, and funny quip I learned that a distant distant relative was the wife of the young Judah. <coughs> oh, wow. I have been judging her for years. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, that's deep. You know what I mean? And so, not that I relate myself, but it's very distant. Very, 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 very distant. <laughs> but to think that I, I could judge from a, di- it's like you're, you're a hard person, but if you look at the lineage, I'm connected to you. Mm-hmm. So. You're not so bad. <laughs> no, not that she's not so bad, but it's like recognize that when you when the album does open up, there's no limit to the images that could be there because we don't know all the connections, right? Until you know you do a deep genealogical tell the story dive, and you know. There are so many men who had children with women and disappeared. So who knows who you're related to, right? And those stories are hidden, right? Or men who had multiple women and cared for all of them at the same time, many harems. And you don't know that that man was related to you because it's like, it's a small island. You think it's huge because you know it's considered there are millions of people, but it's just, it's like, there's more people in New York City. Mm-hmm. So. Endless possibilities with that. I love that question. Thank you. Thank you. Food for thought. Yes. I would just echo what you said, because I like the idea of video, because in truth, you know I always ask that question, uh, as far as the, the big picture. To echo what you said, the best way to travel with a message is video, streaming, in this day and age. Uh, yeah, film. Plays, yeah, like films. Film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like films. <laughs> plays I'll go to if my wife ask me to. <laughs> <laughs> but if of course you do. <laughs> if the truth, uh, if I'm given the choice, <laughs> film, <laughs> we get comfortable and do it as many as we want yeah. and yeah. talk about it. So the film idea, I think, would not only give you perspective on what you said that was, you know, makes sense with video, not only fill in the gap where you saw, heard French and didn't know what they were saying. I, I still don't know what they're saying. So. But, at least if it was a film, you will see things and then okay. you can kind of relate or rewind, whatever. And then, of course, you get the message yeah. out. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Theater, 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 they do that a lot. They, yeah. they that's a new thing Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. I saw something about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do yeah. that now. That's yeah. so important, Bye, too. Bye, Take care. So it's, it's so important, too, in terms of the dialogue and the dialectic because culturally, Haitians will talk about revolutionary times like it was yesterday mm-hmm. you know and have an opinion you know what I mean all of this kind of like US apolitical not so much anymore but you know we're getting less apolitical as a nation I would say but I dare say 15 years ago asking people in the United States political opinions I don't do politics I don't do politics right in South America in general was just not what the cloth would cut out of right and that started with Hayden Schultz um, it's important 
you know, to, to have the reference of, of uh, the Duvalier regime dictatorship. There's a lot of debate in Haiti. You know, you go to certain areas and people are like, we had electricity all the time during mm-hmm. Duvalier and mm-hmm. yada yada. You know, mm-hmm. your family's it was like safe. mine. It was safe. You, you know, be there. families like mine is like disappearances and, <laughs> you know, yeah. killings, rapes, and all the rest of it. It's, it's a little bit of a different... <laughs> You know, tell my mom, yeah. Papa Doc, he's not Papa anything, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not happening. So, it, I mean, there's this, there's, again, there's this tension. There's always this tension. Um, in my observation, too, and experience, there's always a both and thing about Haiti, hmm. right? It's like, we used to say that you can't have, by physics, you can't have two objects in the same space at the same time. Now with string theory, we know that mm. not only can you, but it's always like that. Mm-hmm. So in Haiti, it's as if that's always been known, is that you can have all of this in the same spot, mm-hmm. in the same time, at the same moment, in the same place, happening. It could seem like total chaos, but somehow it's in order. You know, there's, before there was a turnstile in the Port-au-Prince airport, it's just like, you just got to grab your bag or whatever, but no bag is stolen. <laughs> Nothing's missing. Everybody gets where they're going somehow, right? Um, so that's, it's important for people to have that reference that are unfamiliar with the culture because it gets confusing when you come from outside that. But I feel like that's part of our deep strength mm-hmm. is that we know how you can, you can have simultaneous circumstances, simultaneous vibes, you know, all of this thing in the same spot somehow it all works out. Ancestors is a big part of that, mm-hmm. right? But for people to understand that, yes, you do need some imagery, some news reel, maybe, you know, background for somebody to start having a conversation because then that becomes a heated conversation. And therein you have the culture, right? I used to come downstairs at a, a Haitian party and my parents, and um, without understanding Creole, thinking that people are about to fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then suddenly everybody breaks out laughing. It was just a joke. You're telling a joke. You know what I mean? Um, so it's to understand, you gotta, you gotta, oh. yeah, you gotta, you gotta know. And then, and then, you know, all, all, all my life, you know, as a Haitian American, even um, not having that much access to the language and getting that later, discovering that later was like people were always on that. Oh, why are you so passionate? talk it's like oh you're talking too loud and, you know, like, oh. and it's like man this is you know this is, how this is where we come from you know that's how we talk so yeah it's important to have the references and I thank you for that for sure um, the historical references are in the music you can feel it but there will also have to be some more literal uh, you know literal object to point it I just want to make
uh, kind of dual uh, identity, if you will, or dual experience of being American mm -hmm. and then your parents are from Italy, or Haiti, or mm -hmm. wherever, you know? So, yeah, I, I just appreciate hearing those bits of Creole. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to give a comment kind of like pretty much what she was just saying about like being from totally outside of the Asian culture and all the I really appreciate that uh, opportunity to like bring those questions about your heritage mm -hmm. and like that's something that I think is very strong in the play and it's very well done uh, the storytelling to to kind of connect with no matter where you're from just kind of have those questions like you know, this is something very familiar with, I think, pre pretty much everybody do, who has to, like, leave their country for something different, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially for me, like, coming from Venezuela, like, I kind of had those connections with those moments of her, with race, kind of, like, having those questions. And I haven't had, you know, kids yet, but I know in some point they will have those questions themselves. And that's the power, I think, of this play, the potential that it has. To mm. kind of like, no matter where you've come from, to kind of have that connection, those questions, like, oh, you know, heritage, where I come from, like, what is that connection there? And, and I think that's very important and it's very good in this, in this place. Something that I really appreciate a lot. Thank you. super cinematic, which I don't feel like any plays are cinematic, like to be honest and frank. <laughs> but this one was super cinematic, it was super visceral, and I can't wait to see the finished product, even though it'll keep evolving. But like the portals and the fading mm. into blackness, it was very like visceral for me. I could see it as a stage play, but also I saw it very like, a lot of people said it was like cinematic almost. Yes. Um, and I love the complications of home is more than one place. I love, I loved everything about this place. So thank you all. Thank you all. Where you at? I'm trying thank to hide there. there. Thank you all. Thank you, 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 Thank Thank you so much for your questions and thank you. thank you for being here on your Wednesday and thank you. Travel safe, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.